Hi everyone, and welcome to Jane Talks Murder, where I'll be talking about and reviewing an episode of Poirot, Murder She Wrote, Diagnosis Murder, or Jonathan Creek. Today, I'm looking at Jonathan Creek, Ghost's Forge, or as I like to call it, that time Maddie did a magic trick. We begin the episode with Adam tonguing this Cindy girl who's gifted him a shirt before he wanders into a flower shop and eyes up the shop assistant. Dude, can't you keep it in your pants for one second? Meanwhile, Jonathan and Maddie discuss a news reporter, Mimi Tranter, who's written to Jonathan wanting to meet him. But Maddie is more annoyed by the brass band practicing outside her window. Yes, you! I'm warning you! Mimi turns up and boobily asks them to stop, and they do, and she annoys Jonathan by saying his magic tricks are easy to work out, before mentioning her boyfriend Robin, who is also married. Mimi says he and his wife don't seem to belong together, so they hooked up, and he started talking in his sleep about Ghost's Forge, the site of an unsolved murder, the murder of recluse Ezra Carr. Ugh, thanks for that nightmare fuel. He was found stabbed in the neck, and the blood on the floor wasn't his. But Maddie isn't impressed. And what's with this book on pork? Mimi thinks it's weird that someone would murder someone who was a shut-in and none of the valuables in the house were stolen. But her new beau shows up, who's spooked by the articles, and they take off. Adam passes a negative review in the paper around, which he's decided to have printed on the wall, and introduces Jonathan to Samantha. Robin's wife Shirley sniffs one of his shirts while Mimi makes out with him, and furious, she gets in the car, aggressively rings the doorbell, and spray paints Maddie in the face, having found her address in her husband's pocket. Mimi apologizes to Maddie for what happened as they arrive at Ghost's Forge, and Jonathan discovers yet another scathing review about the magic show in the papers. Adam calls him about it, but Jonathan says to invite the critic to a rehearsal and then puzzles over the house sign before they find the blood stain, meaning somebody probably fell down the stairs. Jonathan is still hung up on the name when they hear a spooky noise and Maddie says it's coming from the attic room. So they go to investigate only to be attacked by CGI and Jonathan pulls down a pack of five identical books. The Grave Digger by Gerald Eastland. They want to go into the room where the body was found, but it's locked. So while Jonathan tries to pick the lock, Maddie and Mimi grab a ladder, with Maddie climbing through the window. When Maddie doesn't come back down, Mimi goes up after her, but the room is empty and with the door still locked, she seemingly vanished into thin air. Jonathan rushes around and up the ladder, but nope, Maddie is gone. And after scouring every inch of the room, they decide to call the police. But never mind, Maddie comes sauntering up, with Jonathan figuring out the trick. But Mimi doesn't have a clue. Adam makes out with Samantha and compliments her smile, but when she goes to take a shower, Adam discovers her smile no longer in her mouth and books it out of there. Jonathan reads the book he stole from the attic as Maddie celebrates her victory over Mimi, but a short story Robin wrote is sparking something in Jonathan, and he thinks he may be mixed up in all this. He's still obsessing over the house name, saying there's no apostrophe, which brings him back to the Gerald Eastland book, which has nothing to do with digging graves and everything to do with a miserable Australian man. Turns out, Adam took Jonathan's advice and invited the critic to rehearsals. So now would be a terrible time for Samantha to show up, pissed that he walked out on her. She whips out the teeth, angrily explains that they belong to her grandmother who's in the hospital, and calls him out for being a skis. That's Samantha Clark, with an E. Maddie's face says it all, and she says she had a chat with Gerald Eastland's publisher, while Mimi straight up gropes Robin in his own house in front of his wife, and tells her he wants a divorce. But he has other ideas, and decides to loudly announce that he killed Ezra Carr. Adam, wearing the shirt Cindy gave him, goes to talk to Dougie to try and laugh off the whole Samantha thing, but he points out that the Japanese translates to, I am full of shit. Bye Mr. Klaus. Thanks for the bubbly. Jonathan and Maddie show up to the priest residence to lay things out, starting with the house name and the books, because Gerald Eastland didn't actually write the books, Ezra Carr did. So the house name isn't Ghosts Forge, it's Ghosts for G.E. Here lives Gerald Eastland's ghostwriter. He goes on to say that the night of the murder, Ezra Carr was taken from the house, because even though the name makes you think of the old man in the window, he's actually a 30-something-year-old guy. The man they found dead in that room wasn't actually Ezra Carr at all. Mimi wants to know who the old guy was, and Jonathan asks Shirley to fill in the gaps, so she has a freak out and tells her story. At 15, she was sexually assaulted by her Uncle Bill, but says she liked it, 
But also, he was an old man and related to her, and he kept tracking her down and beating her until they tried to rob Ghost's Forge. Ezra was kind and caring towards her, and she kind of fell for him. But Bill was there to nick shit, which Ezra heard, and they got into a short scuffle, resulting in Ezra falling down the stairs. Thinking Bill had killed Ezra, Shirley stabbed her abuser once and for all, but Ezra didn't die. Instead, he had amnesia, so she took advantage of the situation and convinced him he was her husband, Robin, and they fled, with her taking care of him and filling his head with false memories. She never expected him to cheat on her, and he is pissed. While Jonathan explains his writing gave away his true identity, and Maddie rubs it in Mimi's face that she still hasn't worked out her disappearing trick. Back at Maddie's, Jonathan explains how he worked it out. Maddie mentioned the attic room when it was supposed to be her first time in the house, but she had visited a few days earlier to sweet talk the decorators into helping her out. They plastered over the real door and instead Maddie hid in a cupboard, rattling the door handle when Jonathan did to sell the bit that they were the same door. The brass band starts up again, so Maddie hoses them down, but turns out it was a funeral procession. What the hell kind of fucked up shit did I just watch? Everything is so messed up, I don't know where to start. In fact, I'm gonna sleep on it and finish the review tomorrow. Okay, I'm back and it's just as screwed up as it was last night. Do I start with a 15 year old girl who got abused by her uncle so much she thought she was in love? Or the poor guy who got the memories knocked out of him and then got forced into a marriage because he was taken advantage of? Or the woman who was stealing the husband of someone who's just had a baby? Or should we talk about Adam who is using and discarding women left, right and center? Jesus, Ghosts Forge, you're totally messed up. I'm not really sure what to say about this episode because it's so weird. Okay, I like that Maddie got a moment to pull a trick on Jonathan and Mimi, and it was quite a clever one as it took some pre-planning. Although, would builders agree to plaster over a perfectly good door for some woman who just wandered in off the street? And surely Jonathan wiggling the door handle would have bust the plaster on the other side. But whatever, cool trick Maddie. I don't like Adam. I know that's the point, he's supposed to be a dick, but too much time was spent on him in this episode. And also the wrap up of the case started a full 20 minutes before the end, which is very unusual and yes, gave more time for the explanation, but took time away from the case itself. And while playing on people's perceptions about a name and the whole ghosts for GE thing is clever, I'm not a fan of the episode overall. And Mimi was frickin' annoying. We have several victims, but only one death. Creepy Uncle Bill, who was long overdue as stabbed to the neck by our killer Shirley Priest, who was unsurprisingly sick of being abused by him. So there you have it. That was Ghosts Forge. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below or come say hi on social media. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit that like button. It really does mean a lot. Or consider subscribing if you want more videos like this one. Alternatively, feel free to check out my other YouTube channels. Thank you so much for watching. I'll speak to you soon and keep an eye out for clues.